It's springtime in Whitehorse. <laughs> Welcome to the Yukon and North 61. Uh, I spent way too much time at the gun range this weekend. My very, very first rifle when I was 14 years old, big game rifle that I owned was a Winchester 94 and 3030. And uh, I really loved the form factor of that firearm. It was just such a handy firearm for, for bush use. Under 40 inches long, uh, fast to get into action, uh, six, and a, six and a half pounds. So when they came out with a 375 in the same form factor, the same weight, the same length, the same action, a little bit beefed up, but basically they managed to do that with the same weight in 375 with a 25% power upgrade, shooting 200 grain bullets at 2300 feet per second. I jumped at the chance because the 3030 was, I always, I like the, I respect the 3030, but it was a bit anemic. And so that is a firearm in 3032, that if you want to shoot up to 200 yards, you're, you're fine. And I have friends that shoot moose every year with the 3030. So it is moose capable, but the 375 is more moose capable. But the form factor is what kept these guns in, in uh, uh, selling for so long, not the ballistics. So in the 60s, when Remington decided to try this little tiny carbine, it got so criticized, it's almost unbelievable. Uh, especially the Magnum versions. The Magnum versions have a little heavier barrel, so they're not five and three quarter pounds, they're closer to six and a half pounds, the exact same weight as that 3030 without a scope. Uh, they had a very, very short action. This action can only load out to 2.825. I've, I've owned dozens of these, they all have exactly the same action like 2.825. So I usually load to 2.820, measure every one to make sure, because you want to go as, as long as possible to use as much powder capacity as possible. I've had these in 308, in 6 millimeter, in 6.5 rim mag, in 350 rim mag. My 6.5 rim mag in, it was in a 660. The 660 is almost the exact same rifle as this, with a one and a half inch longer barrel with no vent. And uh, otherwise, it's the same basic rifle, other than it's got uh, some fancy things like a grip cap and uh, this little black melanite uh, thing at the fore end tip, where the 600s, no grip cap, 18 and a half inch barrel, ventilated rib. And the ventilated rib hangs on a is a place for a little tiny good sight to be on, a sharp, sharp fin front, but it acts like a post. Very good sighting system. So, uh, I've been shooting this rifle, it's in 6.5 rem mag. The 6.5 rem mag and the 350 rem mag were terribly, terribly criticized. This was supposed to be like a pocket 270. And after playing with it, I find I can get 120 grain bullets to 3,000 feet per second in this short little barrel. The 140s, I can get it to 2,800. And uh, my best accuracy though with the 140s is at 2,700. So do I have a pocket 270? Just about, not quite. More like a pocket uh, uh, really heavily loaded 6.5 Breedmoor. Uh, loaded heavier than I would load it. Uh, 2,800 feet per second with a 140 is nothing to sneeze at. Even the 2700 where I'm getting the best accuracy, and I'm getting the best accuracy with Spear Hot Cores. I didn't expect that. I thought those Sierras would do better. The Sierras, I'm getting way more velocity because they're closer out to the rifling. But my accuracy when I get to those high velocity really suffers where the Spear Hot Core seems to take the bullet jump and be doing a really good job. And I think they'll hold it together quite nicely at that 2700 feet per second. Okay, there's a... Uh... 105 yards, 0.84 inch uh, group. And that's uh, 140 grain spear hot cores. And the really thing I like about it is shooting about uh, almost to the same point of aim as the factory 120s. So that's what I'm gonna load to, using IMR4831. Why IMR4831? Because for this cartridge, that's a little bit on the faster burning side. 
and that's not so bad for a short barrel. So that, unlike a 30-30, I'm easily making hits on the 425 yard gong at the gun range with almost everything I've played because it shoots pretty flat because those bullets have a decent ballistic coefficient and they're going fast enough. Uh, got a 2.7 power uh, loophole scope on it. This was actually the ultimate slam, but I'm finding the those slug things were supposed to be good for 50 yards. I find it really, really good to, it, it's, I'm easily making hits. I'm easily figuring out where to hold uh, with the reticle. And uh, I think I might be able to get out to 525 yards soon. So nice little rig because it's so short. The advantage is short, but look when I hang this on my, on my shoulder, look where the barrel is. Even if I load it up, if I lift it up onto my backpack to the hip belt length so that I can sit down, it's still, the angle is deceiving there, it's still under my head with that short length. That's about as long a rifle as you can do that with, where I'm not having to bang it on everything going through the, uh, the brush to get up to the Alpine. And when you're in the Alpine, that is not useless. A 140 grain bullet at 27 or 2800 feet per second with a sectional density of 287 is not useless. This is very, very, very useful. And it is, it is in, the, in the realm of a pocket 270. With a longer barrel, you get over 270 ballistics. So with my 23 inch barrel, I'm, I'm, I'm consistently better than I've ever been with a 270 because uh, it's got a little more uh, uh, capacity and they're loaded to a little higher pressure. But uh, that has been improved right out of the carbine class. So I'm really enjoying this rifle. I really think it was a good idea. Remington had a good idea. Uh, these are hard to get, but well worth the search. Remington 600, 6.5 rem mag, under a yard long, six and a half pounds of uh, rip snort and fury. Good rig.